Welcome to The Romantic Side of Suspense with Sarah Hemmerker. In each episode, she'll talk with your favorite romantic suspense authors. They will take you behind the scenes of the writing process, giving excerpts from their writing, and share stories about their writing life. Autumn Vindication by Sally Jo Pitts It's election time and something is amiss when private investigator Robert Gray a former state agent with a tarnished reputation, and its intern Jane Carson arrive in Pine Bluff, Alabama. Initially working a voter fraud case, they find themselves in the middle of a homicide, and their client, the local sheriff, is the prime suspect. Challenged with finding a murderer and grappling with career doubts of their own, the P.I.s are pitted against Robert's nemesis. With a man's life at stake, can this unlikely duo find vindication while untangling the mysterious maze of suspects and motives hidden within the colored cloak of autumn? Hi, and welcome to this episode of The Romantic Side of Suspense. I'm your host, Sarah Hammerker, and I'm so glad you joined me. Today I'm chatting with Sally Jo Pitts, who writes what she likes to read, faith-based stories of romance and mystery with an unusual twist. So welcome to my show, Sally, Sally Jo. Hey, glad to be here. Now, um, I was going to just dive right in and talk about names because um, I don't know, you may not know this, or you may know this, but Sally is actually a nickname of Sarah, which I didn't find out till much later in my life. And I thought that was an interesting kind of twist. On, I don't know how they got Sally and Sarah, because both have the same syllables. <laughs> I'm right, not sure what the right. nickname comes from, yes. but it's just, isn't that kind of funny? I've always thought it was just kind of funny how mm-hmm. names just kind of have that. So we're basically almost two Sarahs talking today. and um, There we go. <laughs> yes. And it, and it means princess. I know, right. Does that, is that what Sally means, or does Sally mean something else? Well, I, it's, it's like you say, if you look up the meaning of Sally, it will refer you to Sarah, that it's a, oh. a nickname or a derivative of. And then, of course, Sarah means is princess. Right. Well, of course, yeah. yeah. So two princesses are having a chat today, so we're sorry for all you other people, but, you know, <laughs> princesses on the, princess is on the move here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So t- let's, let's talk about what you like to read, since that's what you like to write. What are, what are some of your favorite? What are some of your favorite books? Well, um, I, d- I like I like romance. I like romantic suspense, and I truly love cozy mysteries. Um, I, in that, uh, I, I really enjoy those, and. Uh, you know, as a youngster, like many of us, we read, read the Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew, and mm-hmm. whatnot. But I also, I also read um, Alfred Hitchcock, and he had like short story books, mm. and that's where that unusual twist comes in. I always love to read that Hitchcock stuff because his stories always had that little interesting little edge to them or a little twist. Um, in the end, but those those are the kinds of things that that I love I love to read, and for so many years I I was a teacher and an educator. All my reading was educational stuff, you know, right. um, um, professional and and whatnot. So once I retired, I've just really been enjoying delving into the faith based uh, Christian based books uh, and fiction. And uh, it's been an in- interesting. So, have you ever gone back and revisited the uh, Alfred Hitchcock stories? Uh, no, only on like movies. Every now and mm-hmm. then, I'll see an old movie, like the uh, oh goodness, uh, Psycho's hard to watch again. But uh, yeah, the, the Birds <laughs> and North by Northwest and oh, yeah. some of those. Yes, I love to pick up on his. Yeah, he did have a very unique, you know, style, and of course, and I love British, and he's British, so I love, I love British uh-huh. mysteries and cozy mysteries. So you know, I can still go back and reread Agatha Christie all the time. Yes, because cause she's yes. just like I just like I rediscover new things. Um, mm-hmm. What an amazing writer! 
if I write one book that's half as good as anything she ever wrote, I'll be happy. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Yes, I do, I do. I like uh, Agatha Christie. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about um, uh, what you wanted to be as a child. Did that dream come true for you? Did you always want to be a writer? <laughs> I did, well, you know, as a youngster, I did like to write, and I can remember um, writing um, scripts. They were like movie scripts, mm. very, very rudimentary, but uh, I, I would write movie scripts and uh, and picture all the movie stuff in my head, and uh, and I did enjoy writing, but what I uh, wanted to do as far as a career, I never really thought about being a writer per se, but uh, archaeology is what I was interested in as a career oh. as a child. And, and uh, you know, I was thinking, I was just reading the, uh, another writer uh, friend of mine was talking about wanting to be an archaeologist and um, as a young person. And, uh, you know, it's got that concept of digging you know how you have to dig mm-hmm. into your subject and your topic and your characters and the character development and what's going to happen. You have to really dig into it, and I'm thinking it's kind of maybe related um, because I always it fascinated me like the tomb of Tutankhamun. You know, finding that mm-hmm. and finding all those treasures and things. It was just interesting. So it fits that whole mysterious, I think, concept of discovery. And as a writer, I do that daily, you know, digging into stuff and discovering things about what my character is going to do next or say next and that kind of thing. So. Yeah, I know. I think that's an interesting, interesting parallel um, because as writers, we are digging into things, into mm-hmm. you know the past, the motives, the this, the that, and thus uh, those of us who write suspense, mystery things. You know, there's always that hidden shadow we figure yeah. creating <laughs> mischief and or death and destruction depends on how you know which which part of the genre we're working on and. It can be interesting to kind of, you know, dig into the motives and, you know, why people do bad things, why people enjoy doing bad things, why people, mm. you know, you know, kill people or, or hide things or lie and do, I mean, all these human emotions can be very, um, you know, so we are kind of like an archaeologist kind of digging through the layers mm-hmm. and <laughs> figuring it out, Um but, yeah, I mean, because we always think that archaeology is all about the fun, you know, digging up dinosaur bones or, I mean, that's paleontology, mm-hmm. I know that. But, I mean, that whole digging, uncovering the past and, and finding right. meaning there. And um, mm-hmm. But it's like most things. I think there's a lot of tedium with it, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. When I realized that you had to really get out there in the dirt and dust and all that, then it wasn't so appealing to me uh, yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, I think that's what also separates, you know, wannabe writers from from those of us who actually, you know, complete books is that, you know, I mean, writing is hard. You know, there's a lot of tedium to writing. There's a lot of rewriting and, you know, fixing mm-hmm. plot holes and, you know, making sure everything is accurate. I mean, there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. Um, sure, it comes yes. from our imagination, but there's, you know, we have to make it, unless we're writing fantasy, but even then there's rules you have to <laughs> adhere to because um, even yeah. fantasy yeah. readers aren't going to go, it has to be believable um, in yeah. whatever realm yeah. you have it. So, Yes, yes, that is true, and it is hard work. I mean, uh, you know, since I've gotten into this, uh, it, it's unbelievable. Very, very time consuming, but very rewarding once you discover something about your character or you reach the end or 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 whatever. It can be very rewarding, but it is very hard work and it's and it's just not for everybody i I, no. I think I, one of my things about um you know family and stuff, I don't think they really get it. 
um, you know, sitting in front of the computer all day long and working and thinking through these things. It's uh, um, it's a whole different world. I'll, I'll get off in my little fiction world and yeah, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, so yes. So it is. It's a different uh, kind of uh, occupation that is hard work in its own way. It is, and sometimes I find when I'm in that fiction world, like you you were talking about, I find it hard to come back to the real world. (laughs) The real world. Sometimes, you know, I know that someone has said something to me, I'm like, oh, oh, wait a minute, you're talking to me. (laughs) Uh And I'm like on this whole conversation or I'm in this whole scene and I'm like all in it, my laser focused and, um, you know, then somebody says something and usually they don't interrupt me too much if I remember to close the door or something. But sometimes, you know, they need to or whatever, but it it can be that hard um, coming back down to earth (laughs) earth kind of a thing. Almost like the rude awakening from a dream. (laughs) Except I've created the dream and I'm wide awake. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do, what, what are some of the questions you hear when you say that you're a writer? What what kind of things do you fit your family, friends, people that you, yeah. you know, church people? Uh, no, how, number how do they react? one question, number one question is where do you get your ideas? How do you think mm. of all that stuff? You know, and that's... Um, you know, and the the response is is I, you know my head's just full of ideas, um, and uh, the ideas aren't the problem. But you know, it's like you say the the hard work part is getting it into a story form, and right. um, you know who are the characters going to be, and and it's not just the plot, but your characters need to have a their own journey. There's the journey of the story, but there's also the journey of the characters within the story. And uh, so, uh, weaving that all together, but um, my, my first interest in um, what I wanted to write was, I worked with my husband for years as a private investigator. Oh, cool. And so, I yeah, um, he he was uh, law enforcement, retired, and then he opened a investigations agency when he retired. And I was still teaching, and uh, I was a teacher and guidance counselor. And um, so I would work, at, I worked as his intern, and a lot of what I did to begin with was report writing. I would, mm. he would you know, dictate to me what it was that he observed or whatever, you know, the the um, case was about, and I would actually, you know, put it together and write it. And um, so that was kind of my introduction to the private investigator thing. And then, of course, we did surveillance work together and all the other stuff. We, we went to school for lie detection and um, did conducted many, many lie detection tests with people. And um, so uh, he passed away two years ago. But um, before, he, before he passed away, we, you know, bounced ideas off of each mm-hmm. other all the time. And he was a fantastic story storyteller he had a gift of relating a story and uh, making it so so interesting people would just hang on it you know and um, so I I had someone that uh, told me another writer you know she said he has the stories and you write them and that mm-hmm. always resonated with me. And uh, so many, many of the story, actually the story that uh, we were uh, talking about today, the Autumn Vindication started out as our story together as um, private investigators. And uh, so I had it as a husband and wife team. And uh, and we were older, like retired, like in our 60s mm-hmm. in the story. Mm-hmm. And uh, so at any rate, I was pitching it, and they were going, eh, no, we're just not really interested in, you know, that age 
group or whatnot, and I, then I got into reading, you know, romantic suspense and mm. stuff, and I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll take these characters, and I made them younger, and I changed their story background. They're not married, and um, he is... Uh, just opened up his private investigator uh, agency, and she is a kindergarten teacher who is out on leave because uh, she was her mother had cancer and she took leave from school for a year in order to be with her mom and deal with her affairs. And uh, so she needed some work in between, so he takes her on as a private investigator intern. Um, so she has no knowledge of law enforcement or anything. So very much like I was, I was a teacher, an educator, mm-hmm. and uh, my husband had all the know-how. And and, I, and basically, you know, like I say, we started out. I wrote reports. I could write. So uh, so at any rate, uh, that's where this story was, and it is based on an actual case that we worked together. It was a um, um, an election that we were hired to the, there was a sheriff's race, and the sheriff that lost, he lost like by three votes, Mm. and he felt like there was um, voter fraud involved, and so we investigated that. So I used that kernel of a thought (laughs) uh, for for this story, and I changed the county and whatnot where it was located because, you know, uh, well, we don't, wanna, in, we don't want to. We don't want to malign anyone living. We, you know, we do want to do change enough that it can be, you know, our right. fictitious right. imagination. Well, that's fascinating. I think my right. listeners are definitely going to want to read your book. And unfortunately, we're out of time to talk more about oh, that no. today, Sally Jo. But thank you so much for being on my show. I've enjoyed it, Sarah. You've been listening to The Romantic Side of Suspense. I'm your host, Sarah Hammerker, and I've been talking with Sally Jo Pitts, who writes what she likes to read, faith-based stories of romance and mystery with an unusual twist. Stay tuned for an excerpt from Autumn Vindication based on her real life. Now an excerpt from Autumn Vindication by Sally Jo Pitts. The traffic light caught me. Do you see her? Trapped in Mobile, Alabama noon traffic, the anxious voice of Robert Gray's investigative intern broadcasted through the cell phone connection in his truck. I see her. Robert swiped at his bristly beard that could use a trim. Settle down. I'll keep her three cars ahead of me. You move up to 14th Street. Be ready. Okay, but keeping up with a car in traffic is a lot harder than it looks. Robert smiled and shook his head. Launching a private investigations agency with Jane as his assistant had been interesting. She took the job seriously, was teachable, but still had much to learn. Subjects turning left onto 13th Street, Robert said. I'm caught in the turn lane. Come back this way to catch up with her. 10-4. Tires squealed ahead of him as Jane made a U-turn in her black Ford Escort and doubled back. He turned onto 13th Street and spotted Jane just ahead. She followed at a safe distance behind the white Mazda Miata they had been watching since early that morning. He and Jane were a study in contrasting personalities. She approached things with enthusiasm, attention to detail, and an almost childlike sense of trust likely due to her kindergarten teacher background. He saw things with an analytical, maybe cynical view, that delved into motives. For Robert, this small-scale job didn't compare to the surveillance assignments he handled as a former investigator with the Alabama Bureau of Investigations, or ABI, work that really mattered. For Jane, the assignment was big excitement. The Mazda slowed and turned into a parking lot canopied by four rambling oak trees. A sign in front identified the place as Shady Oaks Retirement Center. The subject climbed out of the Mazda and entered the center. Jane pulled into the vacant lot next door. 
Robert drove by in his white Ford truck with dark tinted windows. He turned around and parked on the opposite side of the street. Shrugging out of his jacket, he tossed it on the back seat. The welcome chilly autumn weather had relapsed. Inside the truck, his cell phone was snapped into a holder mounted on the center console. The cup holders were littered with empty gum wrappers, toothpicks, and a half cup of cold coffee. A case file perched on a three-day-old newspaper on the passenger seat. On the floorboard in front of the passenger seat were a Panama-style straw hat, a plain tan baseball cap, and a blue pullover knit shirt waiting to be pressed into service. This was the glamorous workplace of a private investigator. This lady has a thing for retirement homes, not exactly what her husband suspected, Jane said, still on speakerphone. Do you want me to go in? Go in and just inquire about the center. It's cost and... Wait, that's her coming out. So far, Robert and Jane's surveillance revealed that the subject, Marion McVampin, had gone to the cleaners and picked up what appeared to be a man's suit, the vet, the drugstore, and a hobby shop where she purchased some blue yarn. Now the subject pushed a wheelchair occupied by a white-haired lady speaking with great sweeping hand gestures. Some knitting needles poked into blue yarn rested in her lap. Marion parked the wheelchair beside an iron bench under an oak tree and sat down. Take pictures, Robert said. Okay. Robert could hear rustling and scraping noises. Jane mumbled, I know it's in here somewhere. He pictured her rifling through her sizable purse, the catalyst for his introduction to her. They had met at the cancer support group for family members. She had lost her mother four months ago. His wife, Lori, had succumbed to the dreaded disease two years earlier. You always cart luggage with you? Robert had asked. Distracted trying to locate the support group, Jane had collided with him, flipping her purse and spilling its contents. I'm so sorry. She scrambled to gather her things. Keys, a pack of tissues, lipstick, crayons, a magnifying glass, a brochure of Mobile Historic Sites and Landmarks, dog treats. And those were just the items he'd helped pick up. When he heard she'd given up her teaching position to take care of her mother, and he needed an investigator in his fledgling agency, she was a natural choice. In his years as a lawman, he'd acquired the skill to read people pretty well. His performance evaluations often cited his ability to determine motives behind people's actions. In Jane, he recognized sincerity and a steadfast spirit. As a result of her private investigator research, she'd shown him her latest surveillance gear, which included an extra shirt, a collapsible sun hat, two styles of sunglasses, hair clips, a fiber bar, a pair of binoculars, and a small digital camera. I hope this thing doesn't flash, Jane said finally. After a long moment, okay, I got it. Thankfully, this case was an easy assignment for training. Usually, obtaining a good shot of a subject in a covert operation was more like capturing a hummingbird feeding on film. You might wait several hours for a fleeting few seconds of photo opportunity. These subjects, though unaware, were kind enough to practically pose for her. This is our third day with Maid Marian, Jane whispered, and our third nursing home. All she does is run errands and visit little old ladies. Miss McVampin needs a medal, not a tail and I could use a potty break. I think we can pull off this detail. Maybe it's the suspicious husband we should be checking out, Robert said. Because people tend to suspect someone else of what they're doing themselves? Though Jane couldn't see him, Robert gave an affirmative nod and laughed. <laughs> you, my friend, are acquiring the mind of a cop. Let's meet at McDonald's and I'll treat you to a hamburger. I had a chocolate shake and you're on. Thanks for listening to The Romantic Side of Suspense with Sarah Hammerker. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review. 
You can sign up to receive notifications of upcoming podcasts and listen to previous editions at sarahhammakerfiction.com.